Well, that was a show. The Game Awards 2023 has come and gone. Some moments I was sitting there thinking, this is the best Game Awards yet. Like, these announcements are hype. The pace is perfect. Like, that first hour or so, I was loving me some Jeff Keighley. I was loving me some Game Awards. But then, like, the second half just needs to be studied in the lab. The fall-off was crazy, man. So, I got a lot of thoughts here. I'm sure you have a lot of thoughts. I'm looking forward to reading them down below because I think the Game Awards really delivered in some major announcements, especially if you're Xbox, where we've covered Xbox a lot on the channel. They had a pretty rough Game Awards 2022, and I think they responded in the right way. We'll talk about all of that, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. If you're new here and you're into all the modern game coverage, you're in the right place. Consider subscribing, and quickly, a word from today's sponsor. Ho, ho, holy smokes, this video is sponsored by Factor. I apologize, I had to do it, because it's the holiday season, and you might be looking for nutritious food this holiday season. Flavorful meals to fuel you on your jam-packed days. For me, I have been working my tail off to get ready for the holiday break, and so I need quick, ready-to-go, nutritious, dietitian approved meals, and that's where Factor is and has always been clutch. So cross meal prepping off your list this holiday season with Factor. Skip meal planning, grocery shopping, chopping, prepping, cleaning up, all that stuff. Go do what you got to do. Wrap gifts, or in my case, just work your tail off. Whatever it may be, Factor lets you get to what's truly important quicker. You can choose from 35 plus chef crafted meals like I did. Here you're seeing I'm enjoying a personal favorite, sun-dried tomato chicken with zucchini noodles. And when you bring that sauce over to the zucchini noodles, oh my Lord, I'm even having the smoothie while I'm waiting for my food to warm up. It's a thing of beauty, man. I don't gotta say anymore, you know what to do. Head to factor75.com or click the link down below. Use code MATTYPLACE50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. So the show for me began with Metaphor Refantasio, which is the one that closed out the pre-show. This game is coming out fall 2024. Basically fantasy persona. I feel like Atlas took a look at what was happening with Fire Emblem where they're really going into Persona's territory and going, I bet you want to play our game? Okay, we're going to show you how it's done. And yeah, this looks phenomenal. I literally cannot wait for this. Many of you already know this. I adore Persona. It's one of my favorite gaming franchises. To see them take it in a new direction with a new IP, a mixture of like action combat, but then turn-based combat, but you see social systems there. I feel like I know so much about this game on like a surface level, but there's so much that's yet to be revealed. So Metaphor Refantasio looks amazing. It's interesting to see that the Xbox marketing is still there for this one. So Xbox really investing heavily in Sega and Atlas and see some value here, but this game... Oh my God, as a Persona fan all over this, whatever's coming out, I'm sorry, I will not be there. Metaphor has my attention, even if the name is a, a little wild. After this, we get a look at Exodus, which is written by Drew Karpishin. Drew Karpishin is the writer of many games that you may be aware of, especially if you know my taste in games. He wrote the likes of Mass Effect. He wrote Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. This is one of my favorite writers in gaming, but at the same time, he was a part of what happened with Anthem, and that was a moment for me to learn, like, okay, even the greatest of greats can't save certain projects. And I say all that because Matthew McConaughey gets on stage and introduces Exodus, this sci-fi, at least thematically sounding, inspired by Interstellar-style game, and I wasn't really loving everything I was seeing here. The CG trailer had great spectacle. Then they got to the gameplay and you could see it was trying to be Mass Effect, but there was a lacking of elegance. It wasn't as smooth. It looked very clunky, looked very early in development. And so this is one I'm kind of just holding back on. I didn't really have any initial excitement whatsoever, but knowing Drew is writing this game, I do have that morsel of hope in me. Like, okay, this could be pretty good, at least on a narrative level, I hope. After that, we got a look at God of War Ragnarok Valhalla. This is a roguelike mode that's coming out December 12th. It's free DLC, so you can never really argue with that, in my opinion. And I thought this looked pretty good. I know they had Muspelheim in the first God of War. I actually didn't play much of God of War Ragnarok, so I apologize on my ignorance if there's a mode like that there, but it seems like they're just kind of taking elements from that, and it looks like maybe layering and some storytelling, but yeah, God of War's combat rocks, so getting that in a roguelike mode, that's why I platinum the first God of War game, so this is definitely a thumbs up for me when it comes to DLC, but yeah, we're starting a little slow here, right? Like, okay, here's a new IP for people like me, weebs, you got your little taste there, you get some DLC. After this, we see Big Walk. This game is from the creators of Untitled Goose Game, and... <laughs> I mean, it's a weird one. Like, you're these, like, three balls stacked up on top of each other just walking around a world with binoculars, and it looks like it's very puzzle-based, almost. Multiplayer, for sure. I, it's, 
it's coming 2025 i wasn't really crazy about this but i wouldn't take this one seriously from me like i didn't play untitled goose game so it's not like i was really swept up by the meme culture with that one so you might find something appealing in that but afterwards something that i definitely found appealing was hellblade 2. now this is a bit of a mixed bag for me because this game looks amazing like especially the acting like the screaming the intensity the struggle beautifully captured combat finally it looks a little rough at certain times with the combat i'm gonna be honest but it's also like when it comes to the storytelling and the narrative effort like inject that in my veins combat wise though it does look a lot like the first one although like there was a moment she took a hatchet and put it in someone's head there was decapitations and whatnot so it looks a lot more visceral it looks a lot more weighty and i don't know if it just didn't show well at certain times because there were moments it looked really slick and then other moments it didn't look right to me but they didn't put a release date on this one it's just coming in 2024 which we already knew and you gotta wonder what what's going on with xbox with this game i say this not to complain we wanted to see more of this game but something we talked about a lot on defining duke for those who don't listen is this game has been shown a lot it was revealed with the series x it's received two trailers since then the last trailer that we got during the xbox showcase was literally a cutscene. And we were saying, okay, we know what the game looks like in game. We know you have a great focus on narrative. Don't show up till you got a release date and gameplay. And this is like the third slash fourth time we've seen Hellblade 2. And the fact that there isn't a date there, it's like, okay, you're not even committing to anything here. So I'm not trying to complain in 2022, hey, we got nothing Xbox. And they go, okay, here you go. And then complain about something else. It's just that this is a very specific instance where Hellblade 2 has shown itself a lot. And I, I, I just worry that once they ramp up the marketing cycle, like there might be a little bit of fatigue going into the launch of this one. Like we've seen so much of it. So I'm a little disappointed that they didn't put a release date on it. That said, there's always the speculation that a developer direct is at the top of the year and that something like Hellblade 2 can land smack dab in the heart of the summer, maybe at the end of the year. Based off what we saw with the combat, I wouldn't hate if it got the full stretch of 2024 to refine that stuff. I'm just going off the quick snapshots of the trailer. But yeah, this game looks excellent. Definitely looks like the high budget, third person, you know, PlayStation-like title, if you will, that Xbox has been sorely missing for a while. So very excited to see how Hellblade 2 delivers, but much needed gameplay. After this, we get a look at Kamuri from Unseen. This is Akumi Nakamura studio. They apparently announced this without any sort of publishing at all. They're just literally putting it out there for everyone to see. And I imagine this is a shrewd business move because it's like, okay, all right, you've seen the game. Who wants to give us money to actually make it now? Because we didn't see any of that here. So very interested to see how the development for this one goes but if you thought anything was cool about Kamuri, i wouldn't expect to be seeing this for a long long while at least that's my read of the situation afterwards we see a excellent looking game from the very talented moon studios for those who don't know moon studios behind ori ori being one of the most slept on series in gaming if you have not played ori in the blind forest or will of the wisps please do so and their new ip here is an action rpg called no rest for the wicked they're dropping more information on the game march 1st for a little showcase i imagine that's when we'll get some sort of release date but this one looks good really good to me like how weighty and visceral and gory the combat is especially knowing how great ori felt to play like this is a talented team i know there's been a lot of bad stories coming out of that studio but like look man this game looks really good so i'm about the vision here definitely looks like a more heavy weighty diablo and i'm about that because i really like diablo 4. so after this we got to look at sega this is where i had this moment this is the stretch here where like we got no rest for the wicked before this we got hellblade 2 i'm like okay we're picking up steam here sega comes out and announces not one not two not three not four but five remakes i what what is happening over there like what they could have announced one and that would have been a big deal but they announced jet set radio remake crazy taxi remake golden axe remake streets of rage remake even shinobi is getting a remake this is some massive love being given back to the sega fan base still no virtual fighter which is kind of like head scratcher to me like man, like why is why is this fighting game getting kind of pushed to the side here it's a it's a mini game in the new yakuza titles but i digress this is i mean one of my games of the year i'll, I'll spoil a little bit one of my games of the year is bomb rush cyberpunk absolutely love that game 
and it's because that is like the jet set radio spiritual sequel that i've been looking for for so long and i i said in my little video i was like this is gonna put sega on watch like jet set radio doesn't control that well nowadays bomb rush cyberpunk is a perfect evolution of everything jet set radio and now jet set radio is getting a remake like it's a really good time to love some jet set crazy taxi always a really good time really looking forward to that golden axe getting this like third person action adventure kind of remake crazy shinobi staying true to the 2d roots love that streets of rage getting a kind of 3d beat em up I don't know if this is a part of the Sega Super Game Initiative or not, but whatever they're doing, I, I, I am ready. I am ready. I'm loving me some Sega from Yakuza to Persona to Metaphor to, to what we're seeing here with these five remakes. I mean, they're killing it. Afterwards, we looked at Dragon Ball Z Sparking Zero. So yeah, like, you know, like, Maddie's losing his mind at this point. I'm like, are you kidding me, Jeff? I'm like, this guy is firing off with so many exciting games. So this is basically Budokai Tenkaichi 4, and you see Broly from the movie, you see Jiren, I'm like, oh, they got the super character, like, you can see that Android 17 has his Dragon Ball super outfit, I'm like, yo, this is what I've wanted, like, I've been saying for a while, like, I love Z, okay, and Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, like, amazing Dragon Ball game for sure, especially in, like, presentation and whatnot, but look, like, it's time to embrace what super is, and super has a lot of good moments, like, let's embrace that and, and now we're seeing what is that right there. And, and I mean, the combat looked good. The art style feels very much evocative of what we got from Dragon Ball Fighters, which to me is like the best ever Dragon Ball game. So I'm super excited for this. We know that Dragon Ball usually does like a battle hour thing in February. So I imagine we'll get like a release date then. But oh my gosh, man, this game looks so good. Cannot wait to play it. After this, we saw the casting of Frank Stone. This is actually an interesting project that I think a lot of people skimmed over. Uh, this is a collaboration between Supermassive Games and the developers of Dead by Daylight, uh, where it is a single player cinematic horror game um, coming out in 2024. I haven't really enjoyed or loved a Supermassive game since Until Dawn. <laughs> so yeah, like I, I can't act like I'm freaking out for this, but I hope horror fans are excited because I think this sounds like a pretty cool collaboration. After this, we learned about another JRPG. See, like, my weeb soul was feasting. But if you don't like JRPGs, I can see how this show is, like, a D tier for you. Uh, so, yeah, we get Visions of Mana. This is a Square Enix title. To see the Mana series getting some love is kind of crazy. This game's coming out in 2024. And, uh, yeah, absolutely love what I saw there. I have not played a lot of the Mana series whatsoever. So, I'm not going to fraud on y'all. I'm not going to pretend to know more than I do. But I love me some good action JRPGs. And this looks like one. And I'm about the vision here. So I'm looking forward to checking this one out in 2024. Afterwards, we do get another Japanese style title. This one with an actual release date, not a window. We get Rise of the Ronin, March 22nd, 2024, PlayStation exclusive. Uh, this game, look, Team Ninja, you got to put them on your radar. They just did Wolong at the top of this year a kind of Sekiro style RPG, really good. Before that, Neo, Neo 2 being one of the best souls like ever in my opinion, love that game. And now they're doing Rise of the Ronin where you could like paraglide, you're seeing guns. I mean, this this game looks this game looks top notch to me. And now knowing that it's three months away, feed that to me all day. I'm looking forward to Rise of the Ronin. After this, Xbox shows up again with a very important announcement. It's OD Overdose, the reported Hideo Kojima game. It's here. Did we actually see it in game? No, but boy, oh boy, did they soak up a lot of stage time talking about it. And you even had Jordan Peele on stage. So what is Overdose? The way it was described was literally this. It's powered by the Xbox cloud gaming tech, which we had covered before. It is a horror game, but also a movie but also a new form of media. And I swear to God, like that was the wording they used. So this is that Hideo Kojima strand game thing. And as far as I'm concerned, that dude did not invent the strand genre. You know who did that? Capcom with Dragon's Dogma, but that's a take people don't want to hear. Anyway, I'm going in cautiously about this. I know a lot of Xbox fans want to like hype this up. Like, yo, let's go Kojima in the building because of like the, the kind of uh, clout W that it is. Uh, but this guy, for me, like, he has not made games that I have adored uh, since, like, Metal Gear Solid uh, 2, uh, Metal Gear Solid 3. Like, it's it's been a little bit. So, and I think as time goes on, he's just 
a great name to have attached to your console because you know you're going to give a guy a triple a budget to make something that's not very much like triple a appeal it's very weird it's very out there and so i'm excited that xbox got their hands on them there's a lot of popular movie actors and actresses involved as i'm sure you'd come to expect with the hideo kojima game but he also stepped out of the pt door at the start of the whole marketing spiel on stage thought that was a little interesting there and it's looking like this is going to be a very scary game i'm curious to see what exactly he's doing here so we'll learn more but this is he mentioned the cloud gaming making this possible what that is who knows but if there's anyone who could harness that power and turn it into something really unique it's kojima so we will see what it is but this is one i'm kind of stepping into like okay as long as you're making a game kojima i'm about it so let's do it so after this we get jurassic park survival it looks like a first person survival horror a Jurassic Park game and I mean that that's cool I have a buddy who's been begging for this game man and uh it's cool to see it's actually real so I guess I have some personal bias there I'm not the biggest Jurassic Park fan but I think just with Dino Crisis not being out there on the market uh this feels like a pretty obvious win um so yeah I'm keen to learn more about this game see it in action we saw a little bit of like pre-alpha gameplay I'm like okay all right uh, we'll see how this all irons out when we get a little bit more of a closer look as the launch approaches. Uh, this is where I think the show starts to go downhill because throughout this entire show, you have a lot of awards being handed out. Like best RPG was on the side stage. Best fighting game was on the side stage. People were mid speech and you'd hear like the little violin start playing, which was like the audio cue to like wrap it up. You've got like 30 seconds. So a lot of game developers, this was like a throwback to a couple of years where you can see a lot of developers on stage very uncomfortable because they knew they had to rush. There was definitely this memo of like, hey, you cannot be up there long at all. And it felt like a complete overcompensation to the fact that Christopher Judge was just on stage for like eight minutes last year. And I get it. They made a lot of jokes about it to open the show. I get it. It was pretty bad. But also there was like this understanding of like, there's some in between. Like we don't have to go from this extreme of let Christopher Judge be on stage for eight minutes and just soak it all in to all the way on the other side of the spectrum where now we have like Sven Vink winning game of the year and hustling off the stage. I just, man, not a fan of how they handled the awards this year, but it, it just made it more clear what I said beforehand when I was talking about the game award situation, the voting committee, all this stuff. This is a marketing show. Take it for what it is. And I think you'll be a little less angry about that stuff. But if you're gonna be an award show, you might want to make the awards feel more important. I mean, so many were just forked out on the side. Anyway, continuing on. So this is, like I said, where I think it starts to fall off. We get a look at Black Myth Wukong, a game we've heard about for a while now. This is releasing August 20th, 2024. Looks really good. Each trailer continues to look better. After this, we get Suicide Squad. I got it. I'm going to keep it real. You know me. Like, I'm just going to always give you my honest opinion. Gameplay for this game not in love with the whole third person shooting shtick i think this is really unimaginative from rocksteady but i'm not going to sit here and act like i don't think the way they're setting up the story and the presentation like that rocksteady touch is suddenly gone like i see something in suicide squad that can go one of two ways this can actually be surprisingly good or this can be one of those moments where you see all the potential and this game frustrates you because it doesn't fully maximize its potential i guess based off gameplay alone just looking at that, it may be the latter, right? It may just be that game that doesn't meet its potential. But I can't act like when I watch it, I'm like, I don't think it looks bad, but it's definitely not what I want gameplay-wise. So we'll see how this one goes, but I'm going in with an open mind. I am, because I can't act like this looks atrocious, broken, and buggy. It just doesn't look like a Rocksteady game in some ways. But when it comes to the cutscenes and the, and the way that these villains or heroes really are delivered, I'm like, this feels rock steady to me so you know i'm going in with an open mind as i said we'll see how it all goes afterwards we see tales of kinsera this looks like a 2d metroidvania style game which is pretty cool to see that get a main spot on the stage it's coming out april 23rd 2024 afterwards we see lost records bloom and rage this is from the life is strange team coming out late 2024 in my opinion i don't think this game looks super appealing and I feel like Life is Strange is like the definition of the one hit wonder in this industry. Like, I love Life is Strange. Like, the first one was beautiful, beautiful. Love that game. And then it feels like everything afterwards from them it hasn't been bad. It's just not clicked with me that same way. It's not even like I'm searching for that same click. It's just like all of them just over my head. So this one's right in that pile, I feel. 
Afterwards, we get a look at an in-engine trailer for our first Berserker. Uh, this looked pretty good if it's indicative of what the gameplay is going to be like, which it seemed to capture that experience pretty well. Very much a Souls-like style game, very anime-like. It had the Dungeon Fighter Online tag on it, so it looks like it's going to be set in that universe, which is something that they've kind of been doing because I think they also made a fighting game out of it. So I like how they're exploring the IP. I think it looked pretty cool, and it's a good way to get new fans in because I wasn't really looking at something like Dungeon Fighter Online, but like now, seeing how this game looks, maybe that's that step into the bigger mainstream product. After this, we got a confirmation. <laughs> it's so funny. They debuted the theme for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which looks incredible, by the way. And they're like, oh, that's not it for Final Fantasy fans. And so I sit up in my chair. I'm like, finally, are we going to get the announcement for, like, you know, the Final Fantasy IX remake or, like, Kingdom Hearts IV? Like, are we going to get that? And instead, we get Apex Legends cross Final Fantasy VII. And I'm like, yo, Jeff, you're fucking killing me, bro. After this, we get a big announcement. This was one I knew about going into the Game Awards, so I, I apologize if I'm not coming in like screaming about it, uh, but it is Blade from Arcane Leon. It is in development right now. It sounds like it's just starting off. Uh, Arcane, like I said, is making this as the Leon team, so this is the Deathloop team. This is not the Redfall team. This is a third person action adventure game. It's a single player game set in Paris. And so here's where things are really interesting on like an xbox level and maybe this will be a separate conversation but like the fact that this was announced which is major right this is a xbox first party studio game right announcing a marvel game which the fan base some can fraud and act like we haven't begged for this the fans have wanted this style of game from xbox for a while right third person action adventure get a marvel license start working with known ip because that's especially from a business perspective that's going to push game pass like people know marvel you know you have the lucasfilm uh, ip you know the lucasfilm partnerships there with indiana jones the fact that it's a question mark right now whether or not this game is xbox exclusive or multi-plat i think i feel pretty confident like if you're gonna make indiana jones exclusive or if spider-man can be exclusive then i feel pretty good that blade is gonna be exclusive but the fact that it's even a question mark and that xbox was like not attaching their brand all over this thing how do you miss that opportunity Again, separate conversation, I know. Let's talk about the game itself. Blade as a video game. Hell yeah. I am not big on Deathloop. I've said that a ton of times, so I'm not going to bore you on that. I say that only to set up that even though I'm not crazy about Deathloop, I still believe in Arcane Leon. This is the team that brought us like Dishonored. So like, it's one of my favorite games ever. So yeah, like I have a lot of faith that they're going to nail this one. I'm excited to see how they experiment with this, especially it being third person and not first person. Um, I'm curious to see how the, how much Dishonored DNA makes its way into Blade. How much of this is a massive departure from what, you know, Arcane typically is. And this could be a good thing or a bad thing. We saw what happened with Redfall, a multiplayer game, when Arcane, you know, went off the beaten track here. Uh, so I think that knowing it's a single player game, feel pretty good about that. Leon, you know, I can't act like I didn't like Deathloop much, but I wouldn't call it a bad video game. I just found it very underwhelming for what it should have been. After this, we got the last Sentinel from Lightspeed Studios. Uh, you know, cool trailer when like the whole robot, like half their face was removed and the girl was crying. I could feel the emotion there. But look, same story as always. CG, I can't tell what your game's gonna play like. That's what matters to me most. See you later when there is gameplay. All right, moving on. Den of Wolves, this comes from 10 Chamber Studios. And it's another cinematic reveal trailer. So moving on along. Then we get Exoborn, which is a open world extraction shooter. There's a lot of the developers from The Division on this game. So I think that could be cool because my favorite part of The Division, I put like 70 hours into the first one. Uh, I loved the Dark Zone. I thought it was a really cool idea. I had a ton of fun with it. So to have a game based around that could actually be kind of good. So we'll see how that one turns out. I'll keep an open mind on it, even if it doesn't sound really incredible. It's like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll see how it ends up turning out. Then we get a look at Asgard's Wrath, which is actually coming out on the 15th. Uh, Asgard's Wrath 2, man. VR RPG looks really, really good. Gotta be real, it looks really, really good. I don't know where the marketing was for this one and this release date, kind of scary. It looks like uh, for Sanzaru, developers of Sly Cooper, Thieves in Time, by the way, if this one flops, you got your option in the back pocket, right? Go finally make that Sly 5. But in all seriousness, game looks awesome. Uh, we got another peek at a Fallout trailer, but like it had one, they said like a couple new shots, like it's a whole new revision. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, are we gonna see the NCR? You see one new shot, one new shot. I was like, what? Is that a joke? I'm thinking like, maybe we get the Fallout 4 next gen update. Nope, nope, 
not that either afterwards we get a confirmation of warhammer space marine 2's release date which was originally delayed we didn't know what it was going to be september 9th 2024 is the day that game looks phenomenal cannot wait Baldur's gate 3 is out on xbox now at one game of the year so this is a great time for me to tell you it's my game of the year please go pick it up it's phenomenal okay moving on along light no fire gets announced this is the next game from hello games they're working on a multiplayer open planet fantasy game and it's actually incredible immediately sean murray got back to his old ways like immediately kind of starting to oversell it like i just had to remove him from the equation and look at the game as is and if the game as is is what we're gonna get i'm actually kind of in i told myself that i wouldn't get all wrapped up in this i don't mean i'm hype okay we know what happened with no man's sky and the marketing but look this game looks really cool to me i love the idea of like true open world right they, they have a million and one planets in no man's sky a million and one biomes but now you're on like one surface going across an entire planet i see the vision i see the idea i think it's really cool i think it's really bold this is a 12 person team doing this and that's why it's awesome to me it's beyond just the open world stuff it's like okay they're going big for an indie team and look i mean with the procedural content starfield taught me that valuable lesson of like yeah not crazy about that but definitely interested in the scale and scope of the game and seeing how they already had like crafting there it looked like they had combat there they already had loot there it's like okay i'm open to this one a lot more where no man's sky was like wow we've never seen anything like this this is like okay technology's moved along we've seen games big and ambitious before so the the feeling's a bit different where it's like i understand your game now and uh you're not gonna fool me twice so we'll see how it all goes we're gonna stay objective with this one final fantasy 16 had dlc announced echoes of the fallen new chapters are out now for the game and then there's the rising tide which is coming out spring of 2024 so it looks like final fantasy early next year is going to be popping because you have final fantasy 14 also coming to xbox a new expansion on 14 then you have uh the the new dlc for 16 the finals this is out right now season one and i am gonna dive into this as soon as i can after this i'm recording this at almost midnight now uh gotta record an episode of defining duke so wish me luck here i'm gonna be up all night but finals looks awesome this is like the old battlefield style gameplay i miss seeing full destructibility in the environment looks awesome quite the shadow drop i actually found this to be one of the more exciting announcements i knew it was kind of leaked online so i didn't really lose my mind over it, but knowing it was confirmed i immediately went to steam installed that bad boy and i will be playing it asap after this we got the last announcement of the show monster hunter wilds revealed by capcom coming 2025 with more info in summer of 2024 i'm not a huge monster hunter guy like i'm a weird capcom fan i guess because nowadays they just ignore mega man but like i'm a huge x fan and i love dragon's dogma and i'm a, I'm a resident evil fan but like i like monster hunter doesn't light my fire like it's a great series and i will be playing wilds but it was like I, I know for a particular audience like this is a big deal no doubt about it but for me i was like okay cool like definitely a seismic announcement but not the one that's like lighting my personal fire but i felt i was treated well enough throughout where i was okay at the end of the day between the finals and all the jrpgs i got and a lot of the xbox content i felt pretty well taken care of here so at the end of the show like how are you feeling maddie uh awards and speeches handled abysmally they were not done well at all complete overreaction to what christopher judge did last year in my eyes i know that it's more of a marketing show than an award show that's never been more clear than this year so i'm not overreacting to it but like i think there could be a better balance there there's no need to overcompensate and i hope next year they don't overcompensate again and say like okay the developers get to sit on stage for five minutes like how hard is it just to say hey you've got two minutes that's two minutes is enough time to get your speech off without impeding the progress of the show especially when it's like you're doing 30 second speeches and like four minutes of ads and especially now it just shows that like you they, you can load up this show with ads man like the amount of money this show is making gotta be insane i killed to see the bank statement but nonetheless not my favorite game awards in the terms of the pacing and especially the second half just i think was a major fall off but a lot of great announcements for me personally throughout where I walked away kind of enjoying it. I was like, okay, like, I feel I have a lot to look forward to, and I feel I have a better idea of what 2024 is going to provide. Would have liked a few more release dates instead of release windows, but again, 
I felt I got enough there where I'm, I'm pretty excited for what's to come throughout the year. So I'm looking forward to seeing your thoughts down below. This video has already gone on extremely long, so I'm going to wrap it up here. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts once more. Take great care of yourselves. I'll see you next time. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.